<laughs> Amen. Great to see you all. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah brilliant. So when Owen asked me to close out this series that we've been talking about, Resilient Prayer, it all sounded like a really good idea seven weeks ago, six weeks ago, five weeks ago, and then this week. Not so much. But I've actually really enjoyed, and here's the slight nerd in me, I've actually really enjoyed uh, kind of researching this and seeing what God has to say about prayer. So over the last three weeks, we've been looking at personal prayer. Uh, we've heard from Louise. She was telling us how we can go deeper in intimacy with Jesus. We've heard from Owen, and he's been telling us how we can pray for others, with others, and for others. So what I'd like to do this morning is close out this series and chat about outward prayer. What does it mean to walk and ask Jesus for our streets for Dublin? So that's what we're going to do. Um, and just to kind of get us started, I'm going to, I'm going to read um, a piece of scripture for us. So this is, I'm reading from, should come up here. Yep, it did. Um, I'm reading from Jeremiah 29, 7. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I've carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. So let me pray first. Jesus, thank you so much for your inspired word. Lord, I just pray you would take what I've prepared and you would multiply it. And Jesus, that these words would be of benefit. Just pray a blessing now. Pray you come. Pray you lead us in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you're new to church or you're new to the Bible, Jeremiah, is a, he is a test, he's a prophet from the Old Testament, and he was sent um, to, he, just bear with me for one moment, um, he was sent to the people living in Judah, and he was sent to tell them they were going to be taken into captivity. So they're gonna be taken away from where they live. And then Jeremiah is inspired by, by the Lord to write a letter. And so what does this letter say? This letter says, you're not going to be rescued anytime soon. So put down roots, settle down, marry, get to know everybody, but put down roots in where I've called you to be. So this would have been, this would have been a very, very challenging for the people from Jerusalem because they're, they're carried away into captivity, into a land that they, where they don't want to be. And so not only have they been asked to pray to be in this land, they've also been asked to pray for the people that have them in captivity. Not easy to do. I don't know if any of you have ever had an experience of being going somewhere where you don't want to be or doing something you don't want to do. I've never had to be in captivity, so thank the Lord for that. <laughs> but I do want to know what it's like to live in a city where you don't want to be. So many, many years ago, we were living in Toronto. My husband, Dave, and is here. We're, we're, he's from Canada. And we'd been there for six years. But I really felt God saying, you're going to move back to Dublin soon. And my heart was longing for Dublin. That's where I wanted to be. But there was one catch. We had to go via Toronto to get to Dublin. I had no idea how long God was going to call us to live in Toronto. I was hoping it might be a short time. It turned out to be five very, very long years. And I'm not saying, if anybody's watching this, uh, if any of my friends in Canada are watching this, I'm not saying that living in Toronto is like living in captivity. But it wasn't the place that my heart wanted to be. It wasn't where I wanted, it wasn't where I thought God wanted me to be. And so I remember the day so clearly I was sitting down and I just felt like the Lord saying, you have to plant roots here. You have to settle. You have to live as if you're staying. So that's what Jeremiah is saying to these people in Babylon. You have to live as if you're staying. Now there's so much we could look at in this particular verse. There's so much we could look at. But what I'd like us to focus on is what is this verse telling us about prayer? What is it telling us about how we can pray for our city? 
And we, we heard from some people earlier about what's going on in the world around us. We know there's so many difficult things going on. The people in Ukraine are going through some very, very challenging times. So how can we be a blessing? How can we pray? What does this outward prayer look like? So that's, that's what we want, we're going to do. So bear with me, because I'm going to, sh- my inner geek, my inner nerd is going to come out, and I'm going to go through a couple of Hebrew words with you, but I found it really interesting. And then we're going to finish, and we're going to actually put this into practice. How can we get out onto the streets, and how can we start praying? So let's dive, let's dive right in. So the first thing, that these people in captivity or exiles are asked to pray for is they're asked to seek. They're asked to seek. We'll get to pray in a minute. So what does this word seek actually mean? And there's there's a few different versions uh, of seek in the Old Testament, but this one is very, very interesting. It kind of means to investigate. So it's sort of kind of um, giving everything you've got to searching for something. So it's looking for something. It's, It's... putting all of your energy into trying to find something. And once you've found what you're looking for, it's what is that person or what is that person telling you? What knowledge can you find? So it's as if you're standing at a crossroads and you know what's gone before and you know what is ahead of you and you're in this middle piece searching. So that's what this word means. We're searching for knowledge. But more than that, we're actually searching for God himself. So another way of kind of looking at that word, um, it also means to beat a path to something over and over again. So seeking, what does seeking mean? It means coming to God again and again and again, going down that path, that beaten path that we've gone down before again and again seeking him, asking him. Does anybody remember a song that was really, really popular a few years ago, God of the City? Anybody, any of you remember it? I will not sing it, I promise you. (laughs) But that song, does anybody know the backstory of that song? It's really just blew me away. That song was written by a group of guys from Belfast. And they were actually playing in a brothel, in, they were playing in a brothel um, in Bangkok. And as they started to pray, they were, they were playing and they were worshiping the Lord and they looked out over this city and they started to sense what God was saying over this city, his thoughts. And that's back to our word, Darash, his thoughts. So he, they, he, they started to pray over this city, and then these words came, you're the God of this city. You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. For greater things have yet to come, and greater things are still to be done in this city. So that's seeking. It's hearing God's thoughts It's standing carefully waiting and then praying them. So let's look back then at our scriptures. So these exiles, they were asked to seek. Now they're asked to pray. So what does this word pray mean? So that's what we're going to have a look at now. We're going to have a look at the word pray. Um, And as you would expect, the word here for pray, it's, it's pronounced palal, I think. Oh, and you can correct me afterwards, being, I'm sure he's, he's the Hebrew guru, um, but that's the best approximation I've got is the word for pray, you pronounce it palal, and as you would expect, it kind of means to come into the presence of somebody and to, to bow down and to ask in a, in a pleading kind of way. Um, so in the Old Testament, for example, what people would have done, at this, they would go to the, they'd flock to the city gates, and when they're at the city gates, the, the one who could answer their 
uh, requests would have been at the city gates, it would have been there, it would have been waiting for them, and they would come and they would bring their requests and they would say, please help me, please help me in this situation. My, my friend has been robbed, can you help me? Or my, my son has had this injustice done to him, please can you intervene in, in this situation? So that's what this word means, it means to intervene, you're asking. And we had a beautiful example of that earlier from Stephen Debs, where they were asking and praying for their brother-in-law, Ian, and his cancer was changed into a cancer that's now treatable. That's coming to God, and that's asking, and that's pleading. But there's more. There's more to this word, to pray. So it's not just coming and asking. There's something a little bit more. So when I was very young, one of the things I loved to do, you're going to learn a few things about me today, one of the things I loved to do was to read mystery books. Loved mystery books. My favorite thing to do was to read them and guess who, who did it. And then I would read all the way to the end and go, yes, I got it right, yes. Loved doing that. Well, that's what this is like when you delve into some of these words. It, there's mysteries that are hidden into the words. And when you kind of look at them and when you research them, you get to understand what some of these mysteries are. So the word for pray then begins with, a letter, with the letter P, which again, you would expect. But the Hebrew language, the Hebrew language, it's a, it's a pictorial language. So the letters are actually pictures. So the first letter in the word to pray is a mouth. So to pray obviously means to speak, to communicate. That all makes sense. But then there's something more, and this is the amazing bit. The mouth also contains within it a seed. So what is this seed? The seed, the seed is the words that we speak, and the seed, so it's the words that we speak, and it's the potential that those words have. It just really, really blew my mind. When I, so just let that sink in. The seed is our voice and it's the potential that the message carries. So when we pray out loud with our mouth, we are scattering seeds with potential for the future. We're planting, we're literally planting God's word into the ground that will eventually grow and bless other generations. So our prayers will outlast us. And if you remember Louise's talk from two weeks ago, she talked about this. Our prayers are going to outlast us. And some, I don't know if you've read this book, and if you read The Miracle Maker, again, Louise made reference to it a few weeks ago. This is an incredible book about prayer. So it's Mark Batterson, and he's just written an unbelievable insight into ways that we can pray. And he tells this really, really lovely story. So one day, there was this man, and he was walking along, and he saw this other man planting, um, just planting a tree. So he stopped the guy, and he said to him, do you hope to eat the fruit from that tree one day? And the guy goes, well, it's going to take 70 years to get fruit on this tree. And then so the other guy goes, okay, then well, why are you planting the tree? And the first guy looked at him and he said, because when I was growing up, I was eating the fruit of all the trees that my parents and my grandparents had planted for me. So I want to do the same for my children. I want to plant seeds so they will have fruit to eat. So that's what this kind of outward praying is. We get to plant seeds that are going to continue for generations to, ge and generations to come. I'm going to give you another quick story. So many years ago, I was in a very casual conversation with someone, and we were just chatting about prayer, and she said, oh, that's, yeah, that's so, that's so interesting. Yeah, I know a group of people, and they love to pray, and they love to go out in the streets, and they love to pray for Dublin. I said, okay, yeah, 
it's very, very interesting, tell me more. And she goes, this particular group, they would go out and they would just start to lay their hands on different parts of the city, but in particular, Dublin 8. They were praying for Dublin 8. And as they turned a corner, they saw this church that was run down and disused and had a trees growing where the roof should be. So they started praying and they started interceding and they laid hands on this building and they asked God and they said, Lord, would you restore this building back? Would you make it into a functioning church? Church, would you do that? And in 1998, we bought this building. They had been praying for this building. So we get to live that legacy. We get to live their prayer legacy. That's what it is. That's what this is talking about. So I thought we could take a moment and we could do that. We are going to plant seeds that last. This is what outward prayer is. So there's a few people going to start circulating. We actually have some seeds and good soil. I made sure it was good soil. And we've got little plant pots. So I want you, and if you're watching at home, I, you may not have seeds and plant pots lying around, but you can imagine this. I want you to picture this. Do this with me. Think of something that you are asking God for breakthrough in. Where do you need breakthrough? Is it for you? Is it for a friend? Is it for a neighbor? Where do you need to see God moving? Where do you need to see him breaking in? We're gonna pray. I want you to take this little plant pot and um, maybe the, those who are handing out, you could give them the seeds as well. And I want you to, as you put the seeds into those little pots, I want you to pray for that, those situations. So let's just take a minute. Feel free to grab one. Again, if watching at home, even just picture in your mind, praying for that situation that you're, at, you're asking for breakthrough, you're hoping for breakthrough. Just pray and see yourself planting those seeds because these prayers, they're going to last and they're gonna outlast you, and they're gonna outlast you from generation to generation. Does everybody, is anybody who would like to do this, who didn't get a pot, maybe they could come up to the front? So our prayers are more than the words we speak. They are seeds which when planted in the ground will eventually bless generations to come. Is that not amazing? Okay, we're literally going to take about one minute and we're going to do this. Does everybody have a plant pot who needs one and some seeds? It would be a nice surprise to see what seeds grow up at home. <laughs> I got a whole mixture, a whole bunch of different ones. Okay, so we're just gonna take one moment and we're gonna bring those things now to God. And we're going to believe that as we plant, as we pray, we're planting prayers that are going to last. So I'm just gonna give you a moment, just let you pray in the quiet there, yourselves. So Lord Jesus, as we plant these seeds, 
we lift up to you all of these situations that we're interceding for, that we're pleading for, that we're coming down on our knees and we're saying, Jesus, we need to see breakthrough. Father, as we plant, as these seeds go into the ground, we just ask that they would take root, that they would grow, that they would sprout up and would, cr- would bring a harvest, Lord Jesus. Pray for blessing on every prayer that's been said in the name of Jesus. So that brings us then to, to the last piece um, that our exiles are asked to do. They're asked to seek, they're asked to pray, but what are they asked to pray? So they are asked to pray for peace. We are to seek shalom because if, if our city has shalom, we will have shalom. And in all three usages in this passage where it says peace or prosperity, the word is shalom. Any of you know what shalom means? Obviously peace, prosperity, any other? Happiness? Happiness? Happiness, Yes, it does. So the word shalom has a much bigger meaning than the word peace. It describes a whole or fully satisfied situation. So it's when it's happiness, it's harmony, it's peace, it's tranquility, it's a genuine commitment to everybody's health all around us. It means to make something complete, to make something whole. It's living life in all its fullness. In the end, the ultimate shalom can only be found in Jesus. It's a restored relationship with God. Shalom was introduced at creation and it's the way God intended things to be. It's what the kingdom of God looks like. It's the state of the world, and it's what we're asking for because we don't have it yet. It's what the state of the world when people finally live at peace with, pe- with, live at peace with God, with others, and with all creation. It's when everyone has enough to eat. It's where everyone has somewhere to sleep, when families are healed, and when society protects human dignity. It's the vision of the garden and the restoration of every broken relationship. It's the renewal of all things. It's the declaration that God is breaking into our world and making all things new. That's what we're asked to pray for. That's what shalom is. So we're to pray for the wholeness of our city. And if it helps me to remember things when I picture it in my mind. So shalom is wholeness. So picture everything that's broken. What's broken about our world? We, we've, we've heard again earlier about the Ukraine. There's so many things broken about our world. If we look around, what do we see? We see disconnection, social inequality. We see loneliness. We see homelessness. And God wants to break in and he wants to bring wholeness and healing and completeness to where there's all of that brokenness. And our desire is to join in with what he's already up to in our city. We're not bringing Jesus to the streets. He's already on the streets. He's been there for a long time among the cries of the poor and the unheard and those who are looking for justice. But he's inviting us to join him in the renewal of all, ki- of all things. The kingdom of God is advancing and he's inviting us to participate. God isn't finished with this city. Do you believe that? God loves Dublin. God wants Dublin to flourish. He wants to bless our city and it's for our sake. He has put us here for a purpose. He wants us to seek the peace of this city and to pray for it because our well-being is bound up in the well-being of the city. If it goes well for Dublin, it will go well for us. He is the God of this city. I believe him enough to ask for it. Who's with me? So how do we do this? How do we do this? One way we can pray for the peace of the city where we live in is by prayer walking. Have any of you done prayer walks? Yep. I know Owen and Becky do it regularly. 
So this is something that Owen and I and Becky, we did this when we were planting the church that we were part of before St. Catherine's, uh, it was called Icon. And regularly we would go out onto the streets and we would just lay hands on buildings and we would ask the Lord to come and we would say, show us, show us where your spirit is breaking in. Show us where you're at work so we can join in and we would walk the streets and we would pray and we would pray. So we're just gonna kind of finish off. I just wanna talk a little bit about how we can prayer walk and then we're gonna pray and we're gonna actually, um, hopefully some of us might want to be inspired to go out and do this, to pray for our city. So what is a prayer walk? A prayer walk, it's going somewhere with the intention of lifting up prayers for people and situations along the way. And actually the ancient Hebrew word for city is uh, it's, a, it's a place guarded by walking, believe it or not. So as we're walking our city, we are, we're guarding it through prayer. As Joshua 1.3 reminds us, I'm giving you everywhere, every square inch of the land you set your foot on. And so inspired by God's promise to Joshua, we can walk into every part of our city, believing that with each step we take in Jesus' name, we weaken something of the enemy's grip over the system of injustice. Prayer walking thrusts us out of our building and forces us to stay outward focused, stirring us to keep mission front and center. It engages all our senses, rousing us to cry out to God as we walk with defiant hope into every crack and crevice of our city. And again, I'm gonna make another reference to this book, The Circle Maker. Mark Batterson says, if you want God to move, sometimes you have to make a move. You might see on your seats there, those little booklets called prayer walking. So we've just put that together for you and you can take it away and I'm not gonna go through it now, but it tells you how you can do this. And it's a very simple acronym you can use, which is walk. So worship when you go out, you ask God to speak, so that's asking for his thoughts, back to that seeking word that we had at the very beginning, um, and the L part is listening, so we're listening to what God is saying, and then the, the, the K part, that's knowing, knowing about the place that you're doing prayer walks for, knowing and understanding about that place. So, what about us? Here's the invitation, St. Catherine's. Will you join God in the renewal of all things by praying for our city? It's already underway. Do you want a piece of the action? Last week, Owen gave us a great quote from John Wesley. Uh, Prayer is where the action is. Do you want a piece of the action? For Louise spoke about a holy hum that's over this place. Owen talked about a new season. I believe it. And the words that have been kind of percolating in in my mind as I've been preparing for this talk is, God is on the move. He's on the move. Will you join in? Will you tread with me the beaten path of prayer to ask God for the greater things that are yet to come in this city? Will you pray God's thoughts over our city and plant seeds that will not only sprout up now, but but it will produce fruit in the future. Will you walk this city with me to pray for its wholeness, for the restoration of all things, joining in with what God is already doing? I'm just gonna invite the band to come back up. Maybe you're thinking this morning, God, give me the desire to pray on the streets. Maybe you have the desire, but you don't know where to begin. That's okay. God does. That's why we're here. If you would like to join us in walking the streets of Dublin, wherever you're, wherever you're pl- based, you'd like to, we would love to pray for you. We'd love to stand with you. So as the band start to pray, play, 
actually like to invite you to come forward. Come forward and let's together pray for God's peace, for God's wholeness over this city.